coming in with our second episode with information that is so crucial that every single Muslim should be aware of. What is that information? I will tell you that through a story. In one of the cities that I lived in, there was a brother who was so committed to coming to the masjid. It was unbelievable. MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. He's always in the first row, not second, not third, always in the first row. He always makes it to the masjid regardless of the weather, tornado, blizzard, thunderstorm, he's always there, mashallah, tabarakallah. What makes it even more interesting is that he does not have a car, he does not use like a bus pass to go to the masjid, and he doesn't even have a bike or a scooter, he simply walks there. Now after some time, we noticed that that brother stopped coming to the masjid, and I realized that brother must perhaps be, be, be very, very sick. So I immediately went to his house to go and see him and check on him as a brother, this is the duty of a brother over a brother. So I knocked on his house and he opened the door and I was happy to see him standing nice and healthy. And he said, Assalamu Alaikum. And he said, what the F do you want? He cursed a big word and I was really shocked. Why would you behave like that? You should supposed to be, you say, Wa Alaikum Assalam. But the brother said, what do you want? I'm like, I came to check on you, see everything is fine with you because I haven't seen you in the message for a few days. He's like, you know what? I'm nice and healthy, right? Okay, good for you. Now move on in life. Move, Majid. Then I'm like, subhanAllah, but brother, what happened? Like, how can I help you? know, you don't look like you're in the best shape. What's going on? Anything that hurt you, maybe can support you. He's like, whatever, man. I'm like, please. He's like, okay, come, let me tell you what happened. So he takes me to the basement, to the lower level of his house. And he starts explaining. He's like, for the, for the past six months, I've been going to the masjid, praying first row in every salah possible. No matter what the weather is like, thunderstorm, blizzard, tornado, I'm always there. I got no car, no bike, no scooter. I simply walk all the way to the masjid. For six months, I've been making dua to Allah. All kinds of dua. Not a single one of them has been responded to by Allah. Why shall I worship him after all that work? I was so shocked to hear this. I was really sad to hear this. And I told him, brother, haven't you heard of the hadith of Rasulullah when he said that whenever a Muslim makes dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of three things happen? He's like, what? I'm like, when, when, you, when you make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Number one, Allah would make that dua which he asked for actually come to reality. So if you're always making dua to Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, please help cure my friend who is very sick. Number one, Allah would cure your friend who is sick because of your dua. Your dua is risen and Allah brings the cure down to your, your friend or your brother. If Allah doesn't do number one to you, then number two, what Allah would do, Allah will not accept your dua in terms of curing your friend. But number two, Allah will lift the hardship that was about to fall upon you. But because of your dua, Allah lifts that hardship. Number three, if Allah doesn't give you number one or two, then number three, Allah will say the reward of the dua. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow you to taste the sweetness of the dua when? On Yom Al Qiyamah, when you see all these du'a that were not accepted in dunya, transformed into hasanat on Yom Al Qiyamah. When the Prophet, brothers and sisters, when the Prophet said this to the Sahaba, you know how the Sahaba felt? They were like thinking and they were so amazed by this. And he said, "Even nuksir, then we will never stop making du'a. It's a win-win-win situation." What do you think Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said? And don't forget, this is Allah alaihi wasallam. Did he say, "Oh Sahaba, don't exaggerate. Don't ask Allah too many things." No. The Prophet said, Allahu Akbar. Allah will continue to give. Allah will continue to respond. Allah will always give you whatever is best for you whenever you ask Him. And you just keep asking and Allah loves it. Allahu Akbar. So this is our attitude. From now on, you make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you know it's done, it's over. Allah will respond to it. How? Which one of the three? Allahu A'lam. Okay, which one of the three is the best thing? The best one out of the three is? Whatever Allah sees is best for you. Barakallah feekum. I hope this was of a great benefit. Please make sure you share this with your friends and family. Inspire Dua Revival. Take the Dua, the act of worship to the next level. Feel free to like the video. Click here to subscribe to my personal YouTube channel. But once again, what's most important is for you to share this video with your friends and family. Barakallah feekum. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.